24-hour newsroom. Tim Taylor. Denise Dufala. Casey Coleman on sports. And Vic Goddard with weather. This is Cleveland's own News Center 8. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Here's what's happening. Scott Drippon is spending the first night of what could be 25 years behind bars for the drive-by shooting of Michael Sislo. As Drippon surrendered to police at his mother's home seven months ago, he told News Center 8 viewers it was an accident and apologized to the young murder victim's family. News Center 8's Mike Conway reports while the Medina jury did not believe it was planned, they also felt the shooting was no accident. We, the jury, do find the defendant, Michael Scott Drippon, guilty of murder in violation Guilty of murder means Scott Drippon was found not guilty of a more serious charge of aggravated murder. The only reason for that vote to be in that case head is that he pointed the gun at Prosecutor Dean Holman charged Drippon in a cold, calculating fashion, deliberately killed Michael Sislo last August with a single shot from a 357 Magnum. The shooting was an accident. Drippon's lawyers argued the killing was not deliberate. Closing arguments were an ordeal for the victim's mother and father. This projectile, which was taken from the brain of Michael Sislo, and we know it was taken from the brain of Michael Sislo because Dr. Jane, who took it out of his head, testified to that. In a surprise move, Drippon never took the stand in his own defense. Mrs. Drippon, any comment? Scott, any comment? Drippon and his mother refused comment. The Sislo family's seven-month ordeal of waiting for justice is over, but emotional wounds for the entire family, especially for Michael's surviving brother, Daryl, are still fresh. I feel justice has been served, all right? And I do want to say thank you to the Medina Police Department, the Strongsville Police Department, and especially to Officer Ferenny of Middleburg Heights, Judge Judith Cross sentences Drippon to at least 18 years behind bars without parole and with additional gun charges that could stretch to 25 years. We intend to ask the ATF to indict him in federal court. Mike Conway, News Center 8 Medina. Although it's been two days now since the blizzard beast of the east, people along the east coast are still digging out, still waiting for their power to be restored. Rescuers from Florida to Canada spent the day trying to reach people either trapped on water or in snowbound land. And for motorists, it was a white knuckle slow process as snows reduced highways into narrow passageways. And I'm sure by now your driveway is probably shovel clean and getting around is no headache, but there is still a blizzard in our town for dozens of people, a storm of hassles indoors. Kelly O'Donnell is here now to explain. Well, for as many as four days, the Greyhound bus terminal has been unwanted temporary housing for travelers trapped by a storm that seems long gone. Even a few hours ago, a crush of frustrated passengers raced up to us, anxious for any news about getting out. Well, it's bored, I want to go home, and I'm tired. <laughs> this seven-year-old could be the official spokesperson of The Stranded. Step into this line and just feel your nerves start to fray. Hungry, aching, and drained of patience, these snowed-in bus riders are telling me they've been snowed. While the delay sign is blaming lousy weather, they're not buying it anymore. This is my third night sleeping on a floor. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going for this. This is terrible. I've taken one blood pressure pill. I'm probably going to take three more. The dusty floor offers no real rest or comfort. This California man is facing more than one bad break. Yeah, I got a... Uh... A fractured ankle, I guess, something I have to get it checked out. And uh, I've been there for a few days. I can't even go to the doctor, you know. No hot showers, money running out, and no promises of when it will end. I think there's a better way to, um, you know, to keep the confusion and the frustration down. Well, we might be able to sit, send you on it and transfer you if you hold on, okay? At long last, a chance to hit the road. Never so glad to say goodbye, Cleveland. One bus finally rolling. Whatever the city, the destination is home. Next stop, Mentor. And the end of the line finally came for Heidelberg College students. Their Snowden bus made the trek from Buffalo. And the concert performers can harmonize on stormy weather. But it was a nightmare, and I'm glad he's home. <laughs> 
There are still lots of families waiting to say glad he's home. The college kids came home on a, on a chartered bus, while tonight Greyhound officials still say Interstate 80 is off limits. They did get a few buses out, but a seemingly endless string of folks remain guests of the city of Cleveland, and for them, there has really been no thaw at all. Right. Okay. Thanks, Kelly. And the search for 24 missing high school students and teachers in the Smoky Mountains has been called off for the night. The rescue mission continues in the morning. But this afternoon, 117 others from their school showed up safe and sound. They say the wilderness training they received helped them endure the blizzard conditions. But they're not the only ones who've gone through a Smoky Mountain drama. Twelve other students and their teacher were stranded on the tallest mountain in Alabama before the National Guard caught sight of them. First time we stayed in tent and froze just about <laughs> all the way. Very, yeah, very, 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 very. A couple of people was crying really bad and it was, it was really sad at first, but now, you know, everything's better. <laughs> Certainly an experience those children will never forget. And the latest death toll from the weekend blizzard stands at 168 right now. That figure does not include the 32 crewmen missing after a freighter sank off Nova Scotia or the 16 sailors missing in waters around Florida. Throughout the day, the Coast Guard plucked people from the Gulf of Mexico. Icy snow-covered streets slowed firefighters in Philadelphia in getting to a fire raging through an eight-story building. Fire consumed the vacant building quickly, and firefighters had to soak neighboring occupied buildings to keep the flames from spreading. It took them about three hours to bring the blaze under control. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt. She is accused of something few mothers would ever even think of doing. This is Helen Sproles of Toledo. She appeared in court today accused of manslaughter in child endangerment. The victims? Her own children. Police say she spent a night on the town while her three children were left home alone to fight for their lives. While she was gone, fire raced through their house, killing her 10-year-old son and 9-year-old daughter. Her other son escaped. The judge today placed her bond so high she cannot get out of jail. And she may have to get used to jail. If she's convicted, she could serve a maximum of 21 and a half years locked up. Well, something most of us keep in our medicine cabinets could guard against cancer. New evidence suggests that aspirin could prevent death from four different types of cancer. It's already widely used to prevent heart attacks and strokes. Aspirin-like drugs seem to inhibit the growth of various kinds of tumors, and in some cases they also boost the immune system's ability to fight the tumors. In a study of 600,000 people, the American Cancer Society made this observation. People who took aspirin 16 times a month had a 40% lower death rate from cancers of the colon, esophagus, stomach, and rectum. Doctors cautioned, though, that further testing is necessary. Now is not the time to try aspirin on your own. The risk of internal bleeding outweighs the unproven benefits. And still ahead on News Center 8, there's a big reward tonight for the return of the very talented and expensive Jimmy Jingles and those who kidnapped him from the IX Center. And these twins are just two of the many local births spawned by this weekend's historic winter storm. Crime doesn't stop when you turn off the TV. But for only $95, you can protect your home and belongings with a world-famous ADT security system. Starting at only $95 completely installed. Just call 1-800-ADT-INFO and get a residential ADT security system starting at $95. So please call 1-800-ADT-INFO because if you miss this offer, it would be a crime. <laughs> Available at Dillard's. The Oldsmobile 88 Royale. 
a best buy among full-size sedans, the highest ranked car in its price class, and all these accolades before Oldsmobile rolled back the price from $21,971 to $18,995. On this elegant 88 with air, automatic, airbag, anti-lock brakes, power windows and locks, and all these other popular features, $18,995. And the expert said it was a bargain at $21,9. The Olds price rollback, only at your new Olds Connection dealer. While Waco cult leader David Koresh waits for some sort of message from God, he is at least seeing the light. But it's no divine intervention. It's the FBI. They're now using stadium spotlights at night to blind people in the cult compound from movements outside. The FBI was concerned that they were easy targets at night. Negotiators have yet to coerce Koresh to give up peacefully. It appears, however, that patience seems to be wearing thin on both sides. But they released two people in the course of a week, and at that ratio, at that rate, we'll be here for over a year. Uh, that's not necessarily uh, something that we can't do, but I, I don't think it's productive to, uh, to not push it beyond that. I think there has to be something done to move it beyond that and to encourage this thing to be resolved peacefully, and I think we're doing that. It's believed 88 adults and 17 children are still in the compound. Those crews searching through the rubble of the bombed out World Trade Center have finally found what they've been looking for, the last of the missing victims. Searchers found the frozen body of a hotel employee under some rubble. It brings to six the number of people killed in that bombing. The first five victims were found within only hours of the explosion. The two Koreas could be on the brink of war. That according to the North Korean ambassador to the United Nations. Part of the reason, joint military exercises involving U.S. and South Korean troops. All this action is taking place near the border dividing the Koreas. The North Korean ambassador claims shells are being fired at his country. He also objects to the use of high technology for the first time in the exercises. Some South Korean students are also against these exercises. They've rioted because they think the war games will prevent a reunification of the Koreas. Bond issues totaling $25 million for improvements in recreation, roads and bridges in public buildings were approved by Cleveland City Council tonight. New Center 8 City Hall reporter Bob Shermanera says the measure touched off some minor fireworks. There are four separate bond issues proposed by the White administration. Renovation to public buildings like the Justice Center and the new Municipal Center. Price tag, $9.8 million. Bridge and road improvements, total cost, $9.1 million. Another $3.8 million will be spent to upgrade recreational facilities and just over $2 million for various urban renewal and residential projects. Earlier, during a meeting of the Finance Committee, a number of councilmen questioned spending $2.5 million over the next two years for a new road and bridge for the proposed Whiskey Island Marina. A $40 million development. There have been issues raised over the years about its effect on existing industry. I would like to have an idea of what was promised to the developers, um, what type of package was extended to them. But on the floor of council, only Ward 16 Councilman Patrick O'Malley voted against it. And that's great, but I don't think very many residents in my ward are going to be taking their boats down to the dock when they can't get a decent street to drive their cars on. O'Malley also says the two and a half million dollars for Whiskey Island is a virtual handout, while the $250,000 for new neighborhood trees will be assessed to residents. It brought this heated response from Council President Jay Westbrook. A million dollar project was just completed in Mr. O'Malley's ward. He wasn't even there uh, to open it up. Uh, so, you know, I, I know that uh, Monday night can get you a lot of free time on TV, but, but public officials have a responsibility to tell the truth. The White administration says the Whiskey Island Marina project will create 100 permanent and 150 seasonal jobs and half a million dollars in annual taxes. Construction on the marina is to begin this year. Bob Sermonara, New Center 8, Cleveland. His name is Jimmy, he stands three feet high and he's loaded with personality, but many are asking tonight, where is Jimmy? Jimmy is Jimmy Jingles, a ventriloquist dummy that's been stolen or kidnapped, if you will. 
This flyer tells the story. Jimmy was taken from the VacuFlow booth Friday at the Home and Garden Show at the IX Center. Someone might want Jimmy because he is a one-of-a-kind wood-carved dummy transformed into a remote-controlled robot. He's worth $8,000, and you'll get $2,000 if you lead police to his kidnapper's arrest. Brook Park Police need your help in finding a suspect. If you have any information, please call 433-1239. The number again, 433-1239. A description of the suspect uh, is in the police hands. Well, we all know that homework comes before television, but there are times when kids are tempted to turn on the tube when their parents aren't around. Well, now here's something that'll keep the kids from watching at the wrong times. It's the new TV credit card. It's just like a key to the television. It turns the set on and off, but only at prescribed times will it work. So parents can decide when and how much their children can watch. It's called the time slot, and it just may become a rival to the TV remote control. Well, it seems the stork had no trouble getting through the worst storm of the century. And this weekend, it left behind many of bundles of joy, including two for a member of our new Setter 8 family. Ron Mounts, a photojournalist here at TV8, and his wife Sandy, a former TV8 reporter, welcomed little Sarah and Evan to their family yesterday. With both mom and dad having ties to the news business, the proud parents found this weekend's storm headlines very appropriate. Oh, we're, they're going to have wonderful things for their baby book, and we, we have the front page of the paper, which we think is really appropriate. <laughs> Why do you think that's appropriate? They were taken, taken by, by storm. storm. They were taken by storm, and uh, this is kind of the calm after the storm, so to speak. <laughs> Well, by the way, the nurses at Fairview expected a baby boom this weekend. It seems when the barometric pressure falls or when there is a full moon, they have many more deliveries. 35 babies made their entrance locally during the storm of 93. Things were so busy at Fairview, they had to turn a lounge into rooms for patients. And I understand they're expecting the next boom nine months from now, right? Right, because of all the people who stayed home this weekend. <laughs> well, up next, human vultures. You won't believe your eyes. And the wearing of the green could be disrupted by a lot of white. Dick's St. Patrick's Day forecast coming up. Join now and get a six-month alternate day membership for just $99. Or get 25% off. Call 1-800-WORKOUT. If you want the most car for the lowest price, right from the start, start here. Just $18,999. That's your Better Buick dealer's one price offer on the 90th anniversary edition Buick LeSabre. Just $18,999. That's a $2,900 factory price rollback on Northern Ohio's best-selling full-size car. Just $18,999 for a car loaded with all these features. Drive Northern Ohio's best seller for just $18,999. Your Better Buick dealers are out to keep LeSabre number one. If you can't wait to get outdoors, head indoors to the Stroh Sport Travel and Outdoor Show March 19th through the 28th at the IAG Center. Down off coupons at Dairy Mart. Can't get it here. When your taste takes over. You can get it here. Mr. Hero's Original Deluxe Hot Butter Cheese Steak Sandwich. Just $1.99. Mr. Hero! We live here in Hinckley. It's really the only thing that puts Hinckley on the map. So we do silly things, and the rest of the year we have to act normal. Well, just one of hundreds of faithful buzzard watchers in Hinckley who are resting easier tonight, knowing that spring must be just around the corner. No one's sure which corner, of course, or which month, as you'll learn in Dick's forecast coming right up. But forget forecast, folks. Legend has it that the first migrating buzzard show up in Hinkley Reservation March 15th of every year. But these guys could be the first to make a big U-turn. The first buzzard was spotted at exactly 1041 this morning. Now, on a positive note, by the time Buzzard Sunday rolls around, temperatures should actually be above normal for those great pancake breakfasts. And spring is technically five days away, Dick. Yeah, the morning of March 20th. Uh-huh. Yeah.
fallacy. Right, and this is the Ides of, Ides of Mar March. As Julius Caesar would have told you back in, what, 44 B.C., if you remember history books. And, uh, well, as you said earlier, the beast in the east is long gone, the white hurricane, and uh, there's a fairly good chance we'll have some raindrops here tomorrow. That'll at least be a change. The temperature's 34 degrees, but the wind out of the south is really creating a tough wind chill. We'll look beyond that to the St. Patty's Day uh, forecast and even into the weekend right after this. $37 Eternity Purchase at Dillard's. Introducing the all-new 93 Ford Ranger. Introducing the all-new Ranger lease. $199 a month for 24 months with no money down. While the competition advertises a cheap price on a stripped-down old truck, the new Ford Ranger is totally redesigned, loaded with all this and more. And in two years, you could put yourself in another new Ford Ranger. Or you could be stuck in an old one of theirs. The new Ford Ranger, just $199 a month for 24 months with no money down. Your Northeast Ohio Ford dealers are winning Ohio over. I could tell you Subway's 6-inch tuna sub is the world's greatest, but instead I'll tell you about our special $1.89 price so you yourself can discover the sandwich that's a tuna fish wish come true. You know, when you're shopping for cereal, I suggest you walk this way because it keeps the expensive cereals out of reach and puts you in a better position to find multi meal cereals. See, they're usually down here. Well, in a bag. And they're every bit as good as these and cost less. See? This one costs about a dollar less. A dollar! Malto meal. The savings are in the bag. You really ought to come down here. For the record books, we had just shy of nine inches of snow at Hopkins Airport in our part of the blizzard. And that means in the last 33 days, we have had 60 and one-half inches of snow because on February 12th, we'd only had 25.5. 34 degrees in the city, temperature edging upward. Wind chill 12, though, because the wind's out of the south at 16, hitting 28. A gusty Tuesday's ahead, blustery Wednesday as well for St. Patrick's Day. Humidity 57%, barometer beginning to fall 3024, no precipitation today, thank goodness. There's the total for March and even 24 inches. And pollution standard 30 today, 40 indicated tomorrow. TV8 first warning radar shows rain here. And even though we could see a mix of wet snow and raindrops here in northeast Ohio tomorrow, the trend I think would be generally towards uh, more of raindrops as we head through the day with temperatures on the rise. Now, the blizzard, uh, when it snows heavily, everybody says, hey, it's a blizzard out there. I have no quarrel with that. That's the popular conception, but there are rules in the weather books. The bliz in the blizzard, snow actually does not have to fall. That's kind of curious. You have a ground blizzard where old snow is picked up in the air, but to qualify as a blizzard, you must have winds of at least 32 miles an hour, low temperatures, 20 or lower generally, visibility reduced by snow in the air. Now, a severe blizzard is uh, a tougher ombre with winds of 45 miles an hour or more, temperature of at least 10 degrees or lower and visibility at or near zero. Now, comparing the blizzard that just exited off to the northeast, March 13th of 93, lowest pressure I'm aware of at Hopkins, 2953, peak wind there, 46, back in 78. Ah, oh, they don't compare. 2828, lowest pressure ever recorded in Ohio, and a wind of 81 miles an hour with winds of 102 out of the uh, three-mile, five-mile crib in Lake Erie. Our snow this, fall, this time, not as much uh, as... Uh, <laughs> Back in 78, we didn't have as much snow as we had this time, but snow was very difficult to measure. Now, we'll go across the state and see it's 32 at Hopkins Airport. The lake water's still at 33, and we've got a 30 acre in Canton. 32, the Cleveland high today. Three has been the low. The record, 80 in 1990, and the record that just uh, faded away was nine above in 1960. Seasonal snow at 86. Sunrise, 637, down at 635. Look at the record lows this morning. Minus 1 Mansfield, yet minus 16 at Possum Run Road. Syracuse, with 43 inches of snow, has now totaled nearly 175, snowiest ever in that snowy city. A look at how it went. I know I'm late. You can do this all night. It won't do me any good. <laughs> I got four maps to go. 13 inches at Birmingham, 25, Mountain City, Georgia, Mount Mitchell, North Carolina, 50, Snowshoe, West Virginia, 36, in Ohio, 21 at Cameron, and that is down in Monroe County. Now we'll see the clouds moving in ahead of a kind of a clipper-type low-pressure area. 
And here's the airflow we're dealing with now. Here's the airflow as it is going to shape up as we head into about a 24 to 36 hour period. No real change. It certainly isn't opening up to the southwest where warm air is residing as you are going to see that the uh, storm, the white hurricane long gone, high pressure has taken over. And there you see the rain area to the southwest. The temperatures, it was 29 at Jacksonville this morning, 49 the high, 64 Miami. They began at 44. It was 37 at Naples, 39 at Fort Myers this morning. South winds going more southwest, 15 to 30 and gusty overnight on Tuesday. Temperature on the rise, cloudy, windy. We could see a little mix of wet snow and rain towards daybreak. The trend will be more towards rain showers, I would feel. With a high tomorrow of 40, perhaps 42, 28 tomorrow night. Now, as we have a cool front, cold front come in, good chance we'll see some snow. It'll become blustery, and I figure, as I said at 6, we'll see some accumulation 3 to 6, well, perhaps maybe 2 to 4 by Wednesday morning for St. Patrick's Day. The high 30, but a big wind chill, I'm afraid. 36 Thursday, sun in the clouds, and up to 45 Friday. And I think we got a shot at the 45, maybe 50 by Saturday with some raindrops. The weather line, 8810880. A number of calls tonight, about 940 on the flash in the sky. Brexville, Bath, and Brunswick. I have no idea what that was. Oh, okay. Hmm. Thanks, Dick. Yeah. Now hurry up. Yeah, the Cavs <laughs> weren't priceless tonight. But it didn't make any difference, folks. They lost this one. Yeah, they were not beaten. They threw one away. They should have had under the W column. The gory details are next. This is the story of a woman who relied on medical experts to save her life so she could take care of another. When I was told I had cancer, I just couldn't believe it. It's just so hard to believe. At age 32, Liz had visions of baby formula, not chemotherapy. Breast cancer experts at university hospitals who are treating more and more young women offered hope. I mean, I just felt like that was the best place in this area I could be. With doctors who test new drugs to find the right combinations. With researchers who use the latest technologies to find breast cancer when it is most curable. Liz is the really neat case of a young woman who had early detection and is going to have a good outcome from her breast cancer. Liz and her son Ryan are proof that life goes on after cancer. University Hospitals of Cleveland, shaping the future of medicine. There's something new at the minivan store, something bold and exciting. We started with America's most popular minivan, Voyager. Added a sport handling suspension, fog lamps, cast aluminum wheels, sunscreen glass. The result? The exciting new Voyager Sport Wagon. Now equipped with one more valuable feature, nearly $2,000 in total savings. The Voyager Sport Wagon, now available at the minivan store. Only at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer, where real advantages make a real difference. 98.5 NCX, where Cleveland comes to rock. Howard Stern all morning, great rock and roll all day. Jazz blew it big time in Baltimore tonight. They wasted a 14-point second-half lead and a chance to keep pressure on.